and we have dealt with some definitions that are not on the lesson sheet. I'll throw them at you again because it's good that we constantly remember these things. We're talking about law. An attorney asked me today, what are you teaching tonight? And he also is a professor of law. He says, I said, you know, it's very strange that you should ask me this because I'm teaching law tonight. But you see, this is the law of laws. This is the Lord of laws. This, the law of thought, is the law above every law. Together? The law of thought is the law above every law. You see, because thought is the one factor, the one cause, the one power. All of the causes and factors are secondary. I am God. And there is 50 beside me. If we would ever wipe out every other God, every other power, factor, cause from our minds and just let I am alone be revealed, then the wicked would cease from troubling and the weary soul would be at rest and every day would be Sunday. You would lay down your burdens before you get to the riverside and study war no more. I am God. I am another way of saying awareness, consciousness, thought, thinking, belief. I am God. And there is none beside me. Be still and know that I am God. When the senses report to you so many causes and factors from the outside world, don't believe them. Be still and know that I am God. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. The law of mine is in charge. Let every other would-be cause, power, or factor be silenced in the presence of the recognition that I am God and beside me there is no other. Now, the two definitions that I talked about. Law is inevitable factor. No, it isn't. That's not the way I want to say it. Law. What is law in this sense? I'm going to throw it to you. There were, there were two ways I described it, and I combined both definitions a moment ago. Inevitable what? Ah. Law is inevitable tendency. And the law of mind is the inevitable tendency of thoughts to become things. All right? What's the other definition for law with the word facto in it? Law is determining facto. And in the law of mind, thought, thinking is the determining facto. So say with me, thinking is the determining facto. The cosmic law of mind is that universal, that universal principle which inevitably causes thoughts to become things according to the nature of the thoughts. And since we are dealing with the terms mind and body, consciousness and experience in this lesson, let us deal with some definitions of the subject. When we say mind, we mean awareness, self-awareness, same as consciousness. It's I am. When I say body, I mean the physical aspect of man and his affairs. So your body is more than just the body of flesh. Your affairs are also a part of your body. There's the body of flesh and the body of affairs. Consciousness is synonymous with awareness, self-awareness, mind, I am. And experience indicates the results and outpicturing of mind or consciousness. 
experience is the conditions and affairs which mind or consciousness creates. And I want to underscore again the idea that there is only one creator. There is only one thing that creates anything. That is mind, consciousness, awareness. I am. I'll go further than that. There is only one thing that is anything, was anything, I ever shall be anything. Mind, consciousness. There's only one thing that can ever achieve anything, accomplish anything, be anything, do anything, or have anything. And that's consciousness, mind, thought. Every created thing is thought in form. Say that. Say it again. All of your affairs represent thought formations of your mind. Huh? So repeat after me. All of my affairs, of my affairs represent thought formations Of my mind. Here's a quotation from Reverend Ike. My body of flesh and affairs exist in my consciousness and is always subject to it and reflecting it. Now, this is a very important thing. Remember that your that all of your affairs, all of your conditions are always subject to you as mind, as a thinker. Oh, I'm excited about that because, you see, here we've turned the tables on conditions. That's a good title for a sermon. Turn the table on conditions. Come on. And you see, when you realize that my Thinking creates conditions, then you take charge. When you realize that you are not subject to conditions, but rather conditions are subject to your thinking, then you are in control. Let me hear you say, I am in control. I am in control. And do you see what you've said mystically already? You are saying by saying, I am in control. What are you saying? Awareness is in control. Mind is in control. Thought is in control. Thinking is in control. Throw it out of your mind. The conditions are in control. I am in control. Conditions are not in control. Come on. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. The angels in the heaven have changed my name.